Hello everybody, this is another informal update on what's happening with KIC 8462852 or Boyajian Star. Condensing sort of what's out there right now as far as information on the current dimming event. Now all of this is subject to change as the story develops. It's all really preliminary and fluid because the star is literally doing this right now. The event continues. I'll do one of my usual videos on this as we get a more solid picture, but I just wanted to pop on again and tell you all what I've gleaned. Firstly is periodicity. Dr. Boyajin made a loose prediction on her blog, link in the description below, some months ago that if the events seen by Kepler across its run were periodic, roughly every 750 days, the next dips might happen in May. Well, lo and behold, it's May. This bolsters the idea that whatever is blocking the star's light is an orbit of the star. It's worth noting, and don't put too much confidence in this, that at that orbit, if it were circular, that apparently puts the objects, or whatever this material is, within the habitability zone of the star. But as noted um, on the Cool Worlds podcast earlier today, uh, link to that in the description below as well, Dr. Boyajin and her colleagues looked for infrared excess coming from the star some time ago and didn't see any, at least at the time the observations were made. Now you don't get to beat the laws of thermodynamics in this universe as far as we know, so if the material were in a circular orbit at that distance, it would be absorbing energy from the star and then radiating it back out as heat. This is one of the things that you see if you're looking at young stars with disks of debris that's forming into planets. These disks glow brightly in the infrared. And Boyajin star's light curve wouldn't really be that odd if the star were young, but it doesn't appear to be young, so that's really what makes it stand out. This all would suggest that the material is actually in a highly elliptical orbit, like a comet, that allows it to cool down as it gains distance from the star and adds uncertainty to specific measurements in the infrared. This means that infrared observations taken right now during this dip are key. Those are being done, as noted by Jason Wright in an interview yesterday, link to that in the description below, and Dr. Boyajin. But as far as I know, the results are not out yet, but those will be interesting indeed. Now I know everyone's wondering what this does for the concept of alien megastructures. This is my channel after all. All I can say there is that I haven't seen anything either way that bolsters or discounts it, though I am by no means an expert on spectra. I only know a little, enough to be dangerous. I still strongly suspect though that this is something natural, though uh, certainly a rare and cool kind of natural. All I can say with any confidence though is that the interstellar material hypothesis probably takes the biggest hit here, insofar as the information that's out there so far would indicate. I find myself, and this is absolute non-astronomer speculation, um, just me babbling, I wonder what a light curve might look like if a star tears apart a gas giant like a hot Jupiter and tosses some of the gas around and eats the rest. I'm probably way off base with my theory, but science fiction authors are supposed to imagine things, I suppose, though this one may sometimes imagine too much. Another interesting possibility, though, that was mentioned in Dr. Boyajin's interview, and this is about as preliminary as things get, but it's interesting nonetheless, is that the current dip sort of resembles another dip from the Kepler light curve. I've actually heard this dip termed as the SR-71 dip because of a superficial resemblance to the aircraft, but apparently it's possible that we might be seeing the same object or structure, maybe at a little different angle. Um, only time will tell on that. This could all look very different by tomorrow, but it's interesting, and the original feature was interesting because of its, its odd symmetry. One other thing that was mentioned is that there may be further evidence now for Bradley Schaefer's long-term dimming trend, which is yet another puzzling aspect of this star. So a few bits and pieces have come out, and I won't lie, I'm excited about it. I've been covering the developments on this weird star for over a year now. In fact, my first video was on this subject. But those videos were based on science derived mostly from Kepler data and photographic plates going back a century. But now we're getting real-time data on a dip, and, well, I haven't had this much scientific fun since Jupiter got smacked with a comet. Science doesn't get any cooler than this, watching scientists tweeting out spectra and working together to figure this fascinating mystery out. So good luck to all of them. Um, it's really been an amazing story to watch, and it just 
seems to continue to be amazing. So anyway, back to watching the story and researching content for this channel. I will no doubt have a busy week, uh, so expect lots of videos and be sure to comment. It's fun to toss around theories on this star and all are welcome to add their opinion into the mix on this channel. Ideas are what this place is all about. So let's see if I can do it from memory. I am science fiction author and futurist John Michael Godier, currently looking at KIC 8462852, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channel for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live. I did it.